Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So recently I was scrolling through my social media feeds when I saw someone post a picture of an antique scythe. Now some of you may be unfamiliar, but this is basically the tool that the Grim Reaper carries along with him. Well, long story short, I thought it might be fun to recreate it using PVC and EVA foam. And so in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's get to it. First things first, I want to get rid of the markings on this 1 inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. So I grabbed a paper towel and some acetone and got to wiping it away. Now that I've got that taken care of, it's time to add some grain to the pipe using a rotary tool with a cutoff wheel. Be sure to wear eye and dust protection while doing this step since it can get a little messy. Making shallow cuts in a back and forth motion helps to create fine lines in the surface of the pipe, which when you apply a dark wash can give a suitable wood grain look. When I've covered the entire length with grain marks, I'll focus my attention on the ends of the pipe, creating an uneven texture with some deeper cuts. After a quick wipe down to remove any fine dust particles, it's time to grab my heat gun and get to shaping the handle of my scythe. To get the best looking bends, I like to roll the pipe in front of the heat gun to warm it up from all sides. As it starts taking on a golden brown color, it begins to soften, and so I'll remove it from the path of the heat gun and start adding my bend. And after a few more bends, I'm happy with the shape of my handle and can get down to painting. Because I want this to look like it's been sitting outside getting bleached by the sun, I'll be mixing up a light brown color in acrylic paint and will apply it to the entire length of the handle. And once it's dry, I'll apply a black acrylic wash and then wipe most of it away to bring out all of the grain that we created with the rotary tool. This layer doesn't have to be even. In fact, the more variety you can get in this paint job, the better the final outcome will be. When the black wash is dried, I grab some white acrylic and will dry brush the entire length of the handle, making sure to follow the grain pattern. At this point, the paint was a bit too bright, so I grabbed a medium brown spray paint and applied a light dusting to the handle. Then I thought it might be nice to have an accent color, so I grabbed this pale green spray paint and dusted the handle with it as well. When I was happy with how it looked, I set it aside and it was time to start on the blade part of this build. And for that I'll be using some EVA foam floor mat. I found a blade shape that I liked online and made myself a template and got to tracing it out on the foam. And then grabbed a razor blade and got to cutting. It was at this point that I realized that I should have mirrored my second piece, since the back side of the foam has a pattern. So I grabbed another piece of foam, flipped over my template, and fixed my mistake. Now that I've got a match set, it's time to glue them together. And for this I'm going to be using Surebonders Cosplay Stick Hot Glue, since it's made for projects just like this, and it's much more convenient than using contact cement. And with my glue gun warmed up, I can get to gluing these pieces together. And then it was time for sanding. And more sanding. And even more sanding. Then it was time to add the beveled blade edge. And for that I'm switching back to my rotary tool with a sanding drum on it. I also use the rotary tool to add a small detail to the blade just to make it a bit more interesting. Then everything got a final sanding with 220 grit paper. And then it was time to heat seal the foam. Once again, I grabbed my heat gun and ran it over all of the parts to help close any open cells in the foam and give it a bit more rigidity. This is also a must if you're planning on painting. Speaking of paint, 
I'm going to need to apply some rubberized coating to give the acrylic something to bond to. So I gave all of my pieces a few coats and set them aside to dry. Once everything had a chance to dry, it was time to put some paint on this blade, starting with a medium brown spray paint. Off camera, I cut down a few extra pieces of foam that will act as straps, so they'll get painted too. Next up is a charcoal gray metallic paint that I'll be using for the straps. But before I get to painting, I'm going to add a bit of baking soda to the paint to thicken it up. This helps to give the paint more body, which I'll use to add some texture. This, plus a stippling motion while applying the paint, will help these straps look a bit more like hammered iron. While I wait for the straps to dry, I grab some silver spray paint and I'm going to dust the surface of the blade. This will give it a bit of shine, but will also let some of the brown base color show through. I wanted this prop to look super aged, so I mixed up a bit of this terracotta colored acrylic paint and even more baking soda and got to randomly applying it to the blade surface. I didn't bother to wash out my brush so there's a bit of the metallic color here and there, which I thought brought some much needed variation. I flipped the blade over and repeated this step on the opposite side and let it dry before grabbing the silver spray paint again and dusting the surface to help tone down the rust colored acrylic. You can repeat these two steps as needed until you get things looking how you want. The last thing to do was to attach the blade to our handle. So I grabbed my glue gun and cosplay sticks and got to gluing on the blade. Once the blade was set, I took the first of my two straps and glued it in place on the front side of my blade, followed by the second strap, and then flipped everything over and repeated it on the back side. These straps should help provide a bit of rigidity to the blade and definitely gives it a more handmade appearance. As I was gluing everything together, I remembered that I had these pieces of fake hardware that I made from cosplay stick glue in a previous video and thought they'd look right at home on this prop. So I added a bit more hot glue to the back side of each and glued them in place. With all the build completed, it was time for final touches. So I grabbed a reddish orange colored acrylic and started to apply it across all of the parts to help unify their appearance, and then followed it up with a dark brown to add some variety since the orange was pretty bright. I repeated this step until I was happy with how it looked, and then I called this one done. Now these techniques can be applied across a variety of cosplay or prop projects, so get creative. And if for nothing else, try using some new materials. You never know what you'll come up with. I'd like to give a special thanks to this week's video sponsor, Surebonder, for supplying me with the glue sticks and with their hot glue gun. And be sure to check out their website for their entire line of products. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>